Hello everyone, Bossy Games here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be playing Hearthstone 3, a new Let's Play. Today we're going to start our Let's Play as, out of all countries, Mongolia. Oh yeah, baby. So this will replace the Estonia LP. I'll continue all my other Let's Plays on this channel, just going to be doing this one. I um, mean, you know, the Estonia Let's Play failed, um, the Soviets conquered us. This time, we're on the allies of the Soviets. I'll be saving quite often this Let's Play because there were some frequent crashes in the Estonia one. I think that my hearts run through and maybe having some problems. So let's get right into it. We have a okay army for Mongolia. I mean, kinda. Uh, let me look at the whole military here. Uh. Okay, let's look at our officers. 422 officers covering 13 brigades of ships, wings, and this, the navy, but we don't really have a navy. But, so, let's get right into it. Uh, let me save. Well, mainly I'm going to be saving because if the game crashes, I can reload the save, like, really, really close, I guess. Uh, so, here we are. Mongolia. Um, so as you can see, the Soviets obviously want to leak communism into Europe. But us Mongols want to leak it into Asia. That would be quite interesting. So I guess we should get right into this. Um Senma is a popular nationalist China, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're allied with them. So that means that we're probably free to attack them once we get our neutrality levels down. Uh, Mongolian economy, I don't think it's that good. So that's a problem. So yeah, welcome to this Let's Play. I'm your host, Bozzy Games. if you haven't met me quite yet on this channel. Um, yeah, that's me. Um, okay, so let's look at our ministers here. Do everything. Uh, okay. Our leader is Abgan Buyan Amar. Very interesting name of And our vice president guy is jo Dog Ijavian and Luv Shonhara or Sashanhara or something. And there's our foreign minister Pel Jinden Jinden. Uh, let's replace him to some guy named Troy Balsam. Just some really interesting names. Our chief of staff of the army, some guy named Chimid. Interesting. All this is very interesting for a communist country. But, communism is very popular in our country, so that's good. Let's go ahead and mobilize. And let's look at this. We have... Hmm. We don't want to go through oppression right now. Uh, totalitarian system. This is the civil laws. Let's be, uh... This. This is some pretty good things for communism. Our price laws are like North Korea <laughs> nowadays. Um, the press is nothing but propaganda, so... It's good for us. Uh, a full civilian... It's not, that doesn't sound very communist. Actually, it kind of does. Full civilian economy. Description laws. Volunteers. Civil laws. Let's change, uh, civil laws. Uh, no, we already changed that. Training laws. Advanced training. I want to make this as communist as it can be. Because we're communist. Okay, there we go. 
So this is Mongolia. Wait. I do kind of want to go and infantry divisions for the Mongolian army. Let's go ahead and form the Mongolian 4th army. Why not? Ah, crud. The lies aren't working. Hmm. This is really weird. <sighs> Why can't we start it? I don't get it. Whatever. I don't really care right now. I mean, we don't need to invade Zebes and Ma, but I kind of want to. Because Zebes and Ma is our is a country right below us, and it would be very interesting if we conquer them. The Chinese will pull out because they don't really want to fight a war with Mongolia nor Russia, so... I'm pretty sure that the Chinese wouldn't get involved. Um, we have Xinjiang, our neighbor. Soviets above us. The Afghans not too far from us. So yeah, that's... This is the bluest Mongolia. It will always be Mongolia. Ooh, illegal printing. This is just some secret... Uh, police have just found a printing press in a minor warehouse just outside town. Several documents and pamphlets criticizing police and our governments were also discovered, leading the police to conclude that the warehouse has been used as some kind of hub of meetings, distribution of political materials, increase efforts to, trash, to track them down. How about that? Uh, nah. Let's actually have that here. Because the yellow armies are the Chinese, and we're not going to be fighting them, at least I don't think, quite yet. If so, we'll crush them, I imagine. We have quite a bit of cavalry here in the Mongolian army, it seems. I mean, it's not necessarily a good thing, but... There isn't... Bad, really. I mean, we don't want cavalry. I mean, I just don't, because... The whole... You know, machine guns, tanks, you know. It just would kill it all. Looks that we make oil. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but it looks like it. Because in the Estonia LP, we made quite a bit of oil. Like, produced it in our country. Let me do a save. Um, well, let me see if we do make oil, because if we don't have any oil trade, and we get more oil, then that means that we make oil in this country. Uh, we don't have any trade agreements, so let me see if it goes on. I mean, I guess that we do have some oil refineries, because every single country in the world makes oil. That's a fact. Where's my phone? Let me look that up. Pretty sure it would. Uh, ho hold on, guys. I'll be back. I'm going to find my phone. Sorry, let me get my headset on. Sorry about that, guys. My phone's about to die, so I'm putting it on low battery mode. I missed a call from my friend, but whatever. Let me look it up. Okay, I'm looking at list of oil, of countries by oil production. The United States makes the most oil 
but I'm pretty sure that Saudi Arabia probably does actually more. China is actually four. Russia's three, and Mongolia is so close that I'd think that, you know, Russia would make just about as much as Mongolia, but Kazakhstan is the areas that Russia bordered Mongolia nowadays. So, yeah. I'm just going down trying to find Mongolia. Mongolia makes 21,000, exactly 21,000 barrels of oil a day. So, that probably was some oil discovered over since the World War II era. But I'm pretty sure that we make a few thousand barrels of oil a day in this game. Because, like, when you think about it, there's almost no way that they found, like, all of that oil. So, let me see if there is any countries that don't make oil. Nope. Um... No countries don't make oil, but the lowest country in terms of oil is Zimbabwe. They only make 100 barrels. So, there you have it, guys. My phone's about to die. It's at like 9%. Um, my friend called me. But, yeah. I'll call him back after the video. Okay, so let's get back into the LP. Um, so, we make oil. A few thousand a day. Such a formation. So, two Vatava is our ally. Let's see all of our allies. Well, the Soviets and the two Vans are the Tavans. I don't know how that's actually pronounced. Um, they're the two for Republic nowadays, I think. Um, yeah, so let's save. Okay. I keep thinking that the game's gonna crash very abruptly. Uh, Finland. I don't know why. So let's look at our like our spying networks here. Let's lower the neutrality because like so we can invade countries, you know. Let's look at all the countries we can invade. We can invade Russia, but not really. Manchuko and Shaanxi we can invade. You know, Shaanxi would actually be easier to invade, I think, than Zebe Samma. Well let me see, are they in alliance with China? Yeah, we we're not gonna invade. Shanxi quite yet, because then we have access to China, and we'll invade China, but we'll probably get pushed back and they'll advance. The communists, well, we can't invade them quite yet. Um, Sebe San Ma. I mean, I want to attack them f relatively soon. I mean, they're not strong, but they're not weak, you know. I mean, yeah, so. Mongolia, um, more efficient, I know. We have a propaganda press, but we can change that to a free press, or a state press. But, no, we're going to keep it at propaganda. Um, anything else we should change? Our education. Uh, I don't really want to educate our students much. We should kind of encourage them to join the Mongolian army. And so I remember the last part, I fictionally named the... Estonian army, the blue army. Kind of want to do that again for this. Um, the people's army, perhaps? Yeah, just the people's army. Um, so the people's army, I bet it was actually called the Mongolian people's army, so this is very good. And the red army was actually called, um, in real life, the, uh, I think it was called the peasant, the workers and peasants. It's red army, so yeah. Um, that makes it, so, that was actually called the People's Army, so, good. But yeah, I kind of want to, uh, our students to be in the Army, the People's Army, you know, because I kind of am going to basically do, like, no age limits or no gender, gender limits on, in the, uh, People's Army, so, and I guess they will go to school, we're not at war, and we don't need them that much for the wars quite yet. Um, ooh, basic mobilization. So that's not as communist as it sounds, but I guess it's pretty communist. Uh, Choi Ball San looks like he's good at everything, so we can basically make him anything. So, armament minister, he's the foreign minister. 
historically, uh, this guy, Pell Jinden Jinden, actually had this guy, the president, or leader, the chairman, shot in Mongolia. And he took, and Jinden took power, and he started massacring a bunch of people, like a Stalinist repression. There's a museum off of it, and there's just, a, in that museum, there's a bunch of just skulls laying in a glass case of all the people that were shot in the head. So anyways, enough of that depressing factor. <sighs> Let's send soldiers down to the border with Zebe and Ma. Can we officially declare war on them yet? No. Um, we w because our... So, we have a lot of neutrality increasing to do. Decreasing to do, I mean. Uh, it needs to be at like 3 and we're like at 70. <laughs> so it's going to take a while. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, though. Um, there's some Soviets in our country, like mi military-wise. But I don't really care they're our ally. Uh, let's look at the Tuvatanva army. It's only one infantry division I just saw a minute ago. Yeah. Right here you can see, no, that, that actually looks like two divisions. Yeah, it's two divisions. Well, I think it's like two armies, and there's like f actually four div divisions in the armies of Tuvatanva, but that's not our army. Our army's quite big. I mean, for Mongolia, you know, it's bigger than you'd expect. The Mongols used to conquer most of the known world, but now they don't. So, as I said, the Soviets will try to sweep communism of their form into Europe and make everything their satellite state. And, and we'll send it into Asia, and Tuvatanva will hopefully help us. I think that Tuvatanva just kind of doesn't want to be anything. Like, I think that they just kind of want to keep their independence. And not strong enough to do much, but Tuvatanva will probably try to... I bet that probably by the end of the Let's Play there's going to be some kind of violent civil war in Tumfatampa. And um, they'll end up losing and then there'll be a democracy or a fascism there. And then we'll invade them. Because like, I mean, I think that, we're, that um, we'll conquer Tumfatampa before the Soviets can get here. You know, maybe the Soviets might take a few provinces, but we'll probably conquer it. I don't know if we'll keep it like a part of Mongolia, a part of our empire. Or if we'll, like, um, we might actually end up just making it a satellite state of Mongolia. Reform the People's Republic of Tuvatanva, but as our puppet, you know, or satellite state, I like to call them. You know. But I don't really like keeping puppets, because though it does prevent, like, revolutions and a civil war, uh, they're just kind of useless, you know, you'd rather have it a part of your empire as long as you keep the descent down. Anyways. We have some serious neutrality lowering to do. Oh, look, we made quite a bit of oil. Uh, we make some oil every day. Um, Iraq. Huh, how far is Iraq? Uh, it's like hundreds of miles. Stupid. Uh, <laughs> I was talking about Iraq for because it came up. Iraq, Iraq. Uh, our forces. I mean, Gazebe armies can easily just sprout up and just start flying up into Mongolia. But I don't. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> I don't think any of us really want that to happen. Um, let's try to actually make show our usefulness in the world. Anyone that we can declare war on, because it would be kind of cool to just start a war from, like, overseas. <laughs> I think that would be kind of actually funny. Well, isn't it, like... Okay, yeah. I don't think we can declare war on anything right now. I mean, I kind of do when it calls, like, some kind of revolution in Yugoslavia that the Soviets will do that. Like, fun Tito's rebellion. Soviets, actually, I think I've seen in this game, Soviets invade Yugoslavia somehow through 
their satellites. This is after World War II in the game. It might have actually just been Docker's Tower, but like, or some other Hearts of Iron game, but they threw their satellite states to People's Republic of Hungary and the Socialist Republic of Romania. They entered Yugoslavia. They conquered it, and they made it a satellite state under Tito's rule, so that was quite interesting to see. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, it'd be cool to have Tito as an ally. I mean, that'd be quite interesting. Tito's the communist dictator that really did a lot of stuff, but no one really knows about it. Same as the Mongolian communist dictators. I bet most of the people in the world probably n didn't even know that Mongolia was communist. That even Mongolia was a country during World War II, because though they did a lot, it wasn't recognized. There was a, rep a Stalinist repression, and everyone got shot, and, you know. Well, since we're not Estonia like we used to be, we're communist now, I guess we can start killing people under my false order. So I guess we could... I mean, they're already doing this. It's a communist country. Uh, purging the traitors, shooting anyone that betrays Mongolia, the motherland. So yeah, people are dying in Mongolia like they are in every dictatorship country because they oppose the rules. So yeah, people were shooting and hanging and chopping off people's heads and poisoning them and strapping them to electric chairs. But yeah, that was, yeah, that was uncalled for. Okay, I hope that they're a puppet of nationalist China, but I don't think that this is going to go to war. I don't think that that will send us in war with China. I mean... Chinese can't get to us. I mean, they could send up through Shanxi and stuff, but they'll have to f face the Soviets, and I think it'll be pretty hard for any country to conquer Mongolia because A, Mongolia is fairly strong, and B, we have the Soviets. They'll send everything they can to protect Mongolia and Tuvatamba. So, yeah. I mean, maybe not as much Tuvatamba, but obviously, you know. Mongolia. So I think I'm going to end the first part here, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and comment. As always, I'll see you guys next time.